Hello, Parasites. This is Ben Pronsky. I'm the voice of Eddie Brock and Venom in Marvel Spider-Man Maximum Venom. And you're watching the Venom Vlog. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and uh, yes, I got my voice pretty much back to normal. I'll still probably have a few issues from time to time, but for the most part, I sound back to my normal self, and I felt really great about that, so that's why I wanted to wait on recording this episode, because I could just feel it the past couple days, like, all right, I'm getting better at talking, I'm getting better at talking, and uh, and I want to get back into Venom Vlog where, you know, I'm back to my normal self. Um, so I'm very happy to be there. Thank you guys for waiting so patiently. And in this episode, we're going to talk about a Flash Thompson story that we, I didn't almost skip. I was going to save it for next season, but I thought, you know what, let's do it now because next season we're going to get into him being a Space Knight. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And we'll do like a whole week where we cover all the Space Knight stuff and we'll wrap up the Flash Thompson uh, era and then we'll dive back into uh, Lee Price and then from there into Eddie. And that'll bring us back full circle to season one of the show where we started off at the Nativity, which was the end of Mike Costa's run. Next season, we're going to get into the beginning and lead all the way up to the Nativity. So uh, so that'll be great. And for those of you out there who like these comic book uh, episodes where we go through the history of Venom and comic books, this is a very special episode because this is actually the 200th uh, 200th comic book episode that I've made. Uh, so this is the 200th discussion video we've done on the history of Venom and comics. Uh, so if you go to the playlist right now, um, well now if you go there, this video will be added. It'll be exactly 200 episodes. So I thought that was pretty cool because uh, the next episode is the history of Venom and video games. So in our first 600 episodes of this show, 200 of them were focused on Venom and comic books. It's pretty awesome. A third of our stuff has been focused on that. And I would say probably another 60 episodes were probably on merchandise and stuff like that. And then the rest about the movies. So uh, pretty good. The movies are still the majority for the most part. Um, but in this storyline, uh, this is called the Superior Venom. Uh, this happened and took place in the pages of Superior Spider-Man. And to kind of, you know, give you a little bit of background here, what Superior Spider-Man is, if you don't know, I'm sure a lot of you do, there is a time in the comics where Peter Parker um, died uh, in around uh, Amazing Spider-Man issue 700, I think it was, maybe, roughly. Yeah, I think it was 700. And uh, his basically, he did a Freaky Friday um, with uh, Dr. Octopus. They switched brains. Uh, so Peter, went, his mind went into Dr. Octopus's body, which was dying of, uh, I think, cancer. And it, he was very far along, so he was like moments from dying. And, and uh, Dr. Octopus's mind went into Peter Parker's very healthy, younger body. And then it was presumed that Peter Parker died and that uh, Dr. Octopus uh, is now the only Spider-Man and he's living inside Peter Parker's body. And he's using Peter Parker to do all these things that Peter Parker probably never would have done without this kind of uh, help, if you will, which is, uh, you know, Dr. Octopus in Peter's body created Parker Industries. And it was a new startup company that, you know, planned uh, for world domination, but not really, but they wanted to take over the tech industry and, and, and uh, science and things like that. And uh, he wanted to apply uh, Dr. Octopus's brain and what was left of Peter's brain, put those together and run a company that um, could, you know, create stuff that would help the world in, in some way. But of course he's Dr. Octopus and he doesn't really understand what helping people really is. So he was had, you know, he struggled with this being, you know, Peter Parker, because uh, a lot of times he would lash out and friends of Peter's would be like, you're acting very different. You're talking very different. You're, you're more arrogant. You're more this, you're more that. Um, and it also led to uh, this version of Peter Parker getting into a, a love interest with um, uh, Anna Marie. And she was like this uh, girl that works with him at the science lab that he was creating. They worked at Horizon together, I think. And then, uh, you know, now that he, Doc Ock is in his, in Peter's brain, he takes a liking to Anna Marie. Um, so a little creepiness because obviously Anna Marie doesn't know she's hooking up with a supervillain, um, which is very wrong. And it's something they do kind of deal with a little bit in the book as well. Um, but uh, I know I, some people are going to be like, well, how come you're okay with this and you're not okay with like um, the Wonder Woman version? And it's uh, that came out in the new movie where Diana was like sleeping with Steve Trevor, but it wasn't really Steve Trevor, it was some other guy. Well, one, this is a supervillain. <laughs> Doc Ock in Peter's body is a supervillain, not a hero or what is supposed to be a hero. Um, but also that does get addressed, at least in the comic book, uh, a little bit with Superior Spider-Man. 
they don't really address that in the Wonder Woman movie. So that's kind of if I can just take a minute to, you know, uh, tell you why I don't see them as the same thing. Uh, the the actual uh, the, the center of it is the same, but uh, the way they deal with it is completely different. So that's why in this story, I still find, find it gross and I still have an issue with it, but they do kind of deal with that in this storyline. Um, but at this point, Doc Ock has in, you know, Peter's body has started up Parker Industries and he's moving forward at, you know, with the company. Meanwhile, also Flash Thompson, who is living in Philadelphia, who has already uh, revealed himself to Betty Brant. And so she knows that he's, uh, you know, that's what I like. Dan Slott and Christos Gage wrote this story and Humberto Ramos drew it. That's what I like is that they actually, you know, when in continuity this takes place. This is before Flash Thompson gets recruited to go out into space and join the Guardians of the Galaxy. So you, you know, okay, it's from Philadelphia. He talks about getting back there. There's some, you know, urgent things going on. But he came back to New York to help Betty because she, as a reporter, has tracked down a new crime master that has popped up. And obviously Flash has an issue with Crime Master after everything they've gone through, and Betty wants to make sure it's not her brother resurrected, so Flash has come back to help deal with that. And of course, it's like a low-rent uh, Crime Master. It's just a mask that gets passed on to the next goon that wants it, and this new goon is just awful at being Crime Master. <laughs> so he gets taken down pretty easily by Flash. So uh, so Flash, you know, like I said, he, has, he meets Betty there um, and then takes down the bad guys. And then meanwhile, uh, Peter, Doc Ock Peter, um, he gets wind because he has Spider Island, which is like this off the coast of New York. It's full of bad guys and henchmen, and they all work for Spider-Man, <laughs> the superior Spider-Man. So, uh, so uh, you know, Doc Ock tells, like, reaches out to them. And he's like, what's going on? And he updates. They said, yes, we have an update. Venom is actually attacking these docks, and he's beating up the crime master. And Spider-Man's like, all right, I'll be right there. And he shows up with his henchmen, some giant robots, you know, like he's full on Doc Ock coming in and ready to fight Venom. And they do. He shows up and, and Agent Venom's like, hey, Spidey, what's up? And he's like, yeah, I'm not that Spidey. And he just starts beating the crap out of Flash. Burns him, uses Sonics on him like he was ready for battle. And Venom uh, gets his butt kicked and, and uh, Flash basically gets defeated. Uh, and right before he's, you know, finally going to give up because he's standing there, you know, uh, Superior Spider-Man standing over him and Flash is like, okay, I'm, I, the, the suit is not responding to me um, and I can barely keep my head up, you know, on my shoulders right now because uh, I got pummeled and beat up. So the suit actually reacts, goes over, grabs some Flash grenades, drops them down and lets Flash get away. Um, there are other stories going on while this is happening because, you know, Dan Slott and Christos Gage were building a bigger story with the goblins. So there is stuff in here with uh, Carly, who we talked about recently, who is uh, the, you know, the coroner that's working on uh, Overdrive's dead body. And then he comes back from the dead. Um, you have Carly here who's uh, been kidnapped by Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. And, uh, and working for Norman is Philip Urich, who is was the Hobgoblin for a little while during Spider-Man Big Time. But now he's like the goblin king or something like that i can't remember they all get different names um and uh, there's like a menace like a female goblin who's named menace i think and then carly gets infected and she becomes a new a new goblin called monster and basically norman wants to use her for to her ends or to new ends because she he knows that she's somehow connected to peter parker in some way and stuff like that so uh, and he also has been noticing that peter parker has been acting differently lately so he's trying to plan for that too so uh, he's trying to get to the bottom of what's going on uh, but all of that is all in the background i'm not going to really talk much about that but you have you know the original hobgoblin kingsley and you have uh, norman osborne and they're basically in the background of the story building up to a bigger storyline uh called goblin nation where a bunch of goblins fight each other and spidey's in the middle um so that's a story for something else <laughs> here we're just going to focus on flash and there's some great imagery here with flash after he gets beat up him getting back into his wheelchair and uh, you know retracting the suit and his relationship with the suit uh, there are parts in this where the suit acknowledges that Flash has been suppressing him and doesn't like that. So again, you get a little bit of the character of the symbiote. Not a ton, honestly, but more than some other writers did around this time. I think Colin Bunn did it the best, but there's a little bit in here of that, which is like, okay, great. Um, and meanwhile, you also have another background story where Spider-Man 2099 has come back in time and he's secretly working for Alchemex as it's starting up and he's working with like his great grandfather or something like that or his grandfather um tiberius stone so that's like a storyline in the background um and then there's also this other story where aunt may is meeting anna marie for the first time and anna marie is um is you know she's like only like four foot ten or something like that or four foot six she's short um and so i guess aunt may 
can't help but ask questions about that. Like, oh, you're dating my nephew, but you know, well, if you have kids, are, are they gonna be like you? And, and obviously that upsets uh, Doc Ock and Peter's body, but I think that would upset regular Peter Parker too. I thought that was a pretty justified reaction to Aunt May's kind of an ignorant question. And we all know Aunt May means well, but she just, you know, verbal diarrhea. And Anna Marie tries, she's like, hey, look, it's not a big deal. Like, I understand what she's trying to say. I don't take it as that, dis you know, as it being that disrespectful. I know what she means at heart. Um, yes, she could probably word it better, but I'm trying to be, you know, patient with her, which is very big of Anna Marie. Um, but uh, Doc Ock Peter is not having it. Um, but he did help uh, Aunt May get like a new limb, uh, you know, replacement, um, because he's Doc Ock inside. And he's always wanted to help Aunt May, because at one point, Doc Ock, and Aunt May like went on a date one time. So uh, so he kind of has a, a, he cares for her, but he also knows Peter cares for her. And he made Peter a promise that he would protect Aunt May um, after Peter died. It was like one of Peter's last wishes, like, please just whatever you do in my body, just make sure my Aunt May is gonna be okay. And Doc Ock was like, okay, fine, I I'll give you that. So he helps Aunt May get a new limb, uh, like a hip replacement or something. And then it's like, hey, this new technology, I can use it on you, Flash. I can get you some, you know, uh, new legs. And Flash is like, that's great, but, um, you know, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm making my way. And he goes, no, nah, come on. He's like, new legs that could work for you, robotic, state of the art, you know, best thing. Even Stark Industries can't do something like this for you. Just let me help you. So, of course, Superior Spider-Man knows that Flash is uh, Venom because at the beginning when he's beating him up, the symbiote came off his face and, and Flash, like, Pete, you know, not Pete, but he's like, Spidey, come on, it's me, Flash, please don't kill me. And he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that Spider-Man, I'm going to hurt you. Um, so that was, that happened to begin, at the beginning. So now this Doc Ock Spider-Man knows Flash is Venom. So he is like taunting him at the dinner table. And then he's like, finally goes, look, uh, you know, because they're Aunt May, that whole thing breaks out. And Flash's like, I think I should just leave. He goes, no, Flash, I brought you here for a reason. This is what I want to tell you about the leg thing. Uh, I can get you some new legs. Why don't you come down to my lab and let's check it out? So he lures Flash down to the lab. And then, of course, uh, Cardiac, uh, a villain who uh, has been in comics, he's got electric powers and stuff. Um, he's working with Superior Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man hired him to work at Parker Industries, which is pretty cool. Um, and he's trying to be a good guy, actually. So he helps strap uh, Flash down. They bring in this machine. They electrocute uh, Flash. They get the new legs on them, but it separates the symbiote from Flash. And once the symbiote is uh, separated from Flash and it doesn't have the, the drugs, anything pumping through it, it starts to go wild and it breaks through the case. And that's when it becomes the superior Venom by joining the superior Spider-Man. So we have uh, the Peter Parker body, the Doc Ock mind bonding with uh, the Venom symbiote. And what I really like is there are moments where the symbiote is talking and it's saying, I recognize the body, but something's not right with the brain. And uh, and you start to see like, okay, what's going on? And that tips Flash off that, okay, something is going on with Spidey. What is it? You know, And that gets the other heroes talking because the Avengers get called in because Mary Jane gets involved. Um, and there's like a cop who's trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with Spider-Man and how he's connected to Peter Parker and all this stuff. And Mary Jane kind of has been covering for him, but she's been noticing his behavior lately has been changing. So she calls in the Avengers to go after Superior Spider-Man. And Superior Spider-Man is meanwhile going around town, dropping his little tech drones and stuff, going, hey, find me some crime to destroy because now with this suit, I can do so much more. Things Peter Parker never did with this symbiote. Um, and then meanwhile, he's going out tearing butt. Avengers are looking for him and Flash is back at the lab with Cardiac and some of the other doctors. And he's just like, I don't know what happened. You know, I don't know what's been going on with Spidey lately, uh, but he's definitely not himself. Uh, we got to find a way to help him, uh, you know, and I don't think Flash does too much. Actually, he does because he gets involved with the Avengers because obviously Captain America uh, knows that Flash is, is Venom. So he comes and gets Flash and he's like, all right, what's your plan? How do we save, uh, you know, Spider-Man from this alien symbiote? And how do we get the symbiote to go back to you? So that way any drugs that are still in your body can help, uh, you know, contain it. Um, and Flash even says, yeah, the drugs, even when they're wearing off, I'm still in control of the suit. We're starting to build a relationship together. So I did like this because this takes place before the Mania arc. And that's kind of what they talk a little bit about in the Mania arc. So I really did like a lot of the stuff that's in here. I thought the artwork was really great. I thought the storyline was really fun. And it's cool to see the symbiote bonding with a familiar host like Peter Parker, uh, but having a different brain inside, much like when, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Spider Carnage? It had Carnage bonding with 
Peter Parker, but it was Ben Riley. So it had Ben Riley's memories in mind inside of it. And, uh, and Ben really fought hard to not be taken over by Carnage, which is hard to do because Carnage is literally the DNA too of Cletus Cassidy. And yet he somehow resisted it for, for a pretty good amount of time. So I really always liked the Spider Carnage story. And I kind of like this. This was fun. Um, there was a really intense moment where uh, Peter reveals that he's covered in the symbiote, even though it's Doc Ock inside of him. But he reveals it and he threatens Mary Jane. And that's a big moment because Mary Jane's always been afraid of the symbiote ever since it first appeared. So that big moment that happened in this comic, I was like, wow, they actually went there. And, they, uh, and, and Mary Jane was very much shook by that. So that's what ultimately prompts her to go get the Avengers. So in the last issue, when you know Superior Venom is beating down all these villains uh, who are working for the Hobgoblin and stuff, uh, he's just like, "Hey, I need crime to fight. Go find me some crime." He's taking down these guys, and that's when the Avengers show up, and you actually get a really good fight between Thor and Superior Venom, which is only relevant because obviously, currently in comics, we're starting to see those two worlds merge a little bit more ever since uh, Gore the God Butcher and then what uh, Donny Cates is doing now with everything. So you're, you're starting to see a little bit more of a blend of the Thor mythology and into some of the Venom mythology too. So I thought this fight here was really neat to kind of see and, and see everyone you know going toe to toe with Venom, but really a lot of it being Thor going toe to toe with Venom, which was really cool. Um, so there's a big moment at the end where Tony Stark uh, sends a suit, like an Iron Man suit, to get Flash, and Flash actually gets into the Iron Man suit and joins the final battle. So I really like that too. As a Flash Thompson fan, I was like, hey, that's cool. He's piloting some Iron Man armor, which is really great. And they're all, you know, him and all the Avengers, Captain America, everybody, they're, you know, fighting against Superior uh, Venom, uh, Superior Spider Man uh, in the Venom suit. And they're going toe to toe. They're, you know, they're kicking the crap out of them. And then that's when Flash shows up in the Iron Man armor, uh, electrocutes the suit gets it to break free and uh, or start to break free but here's the cool part um the suit is still tethered and and, and uh, doc ock won't let it go the doc ock personality is like no this thing is power and i'm gonna find a way to control it and i'm not gonna let the even though it's in pain i'm not gonna let it get away with me so that was something lee price did later on and we'll talk about that next season where lee price actually was able to prevent the suit from leaving him because it just it held on to the suit a superior of Spider-Man or Doc Ock was able to do that before Lee Price. Uh, and that's what he's doing here. He's not letting the suit go. So this is when we finally see the memory of Peter Parker, a part of Peter Parker's consciousness that's still alive in his body. Uh, the part that doesn't let Doc Ock go too far into hurting the ones Peter loves. Because uh, sometimes Doc Ock will pull back and go, uh, you know what, I changed my mind on this. Um, and it's because Peter's there. And he's always been there, apparently. And so he comes out and he he's using his willpower to reveal himself. And he's like, all right, Doc might now, he might find out now that I'm in this body with him. I've been hiding out so he can't find me. He goes, so he might find out I'm in here with him, but I can't let this suit and him stay together. So Peter wills the suit and he's like, hey, it's me. Remember me? Let's get you out of here. Let's get you back on Flash Thompson, um, back to your original host. And uh, and I, I like that. Actually, that moment was really big. So of course, the, the suit gets ripped off of Superior Spider-Man uh, and it goes right back to Flash Thompson and he rebonds with the suit. Um, and then that's when Superior Spider-Man gets to come out and say, all right, you know, because Mary Jane comes up and all these Avengers are like, you've been acting weird. He's like, all right, you're right. I've been acting weird lately. And it's because I've had the symbiote. I'm sorry. Um, you know, please accept my apology. And they're all kind of like, like, uh, you just got that symbiote like a day ago. Like, are you really like that? Like, you've been acting weird for a while now. Um, and uh, he's like, yeah, it's fine. It was just the suit. It's, you know, whatever. Uh, it had there was a traces of the, the original suit still in me. And this, you know, found a way to bond with that or something. He comes up with some lame excuse and nobody's buying it. Um, so as he, you know, uh, goes back to, uh, you know, he goes actually back to Mary Jane's apartment and he says, hey, thanks for helping me talk to everybody. Mary Jane actually starts to believe him. She thinks because she hates the suit so much. So she's like, yeah, OK, it was just the suit. Thank goodness. Um, that's why you've been acting weird. So he's like, hey, thanks for telling Aunt May that and, and, you know, telling her, you know, covering for me again and again. I really appreciate it. You've been a good friend. Um, thank you for doing that. And she's like, yeah, no problem. And, you know, how are things with Anna Marie going? So they kind of have a little chit chat, um, which is weird because, again, it's a Doc Ock in Peter's brain. But again, he's plotting a lot of things and he doesn't want people to suspect something's going on. So luckily, he's got all of his normal close friends to uh, lose their suspicion 
But Flash and the Avengers still suspect something's going on with Peter. Um, so they, at the end, are like, all right, we got to do something. We got to go take down the Superior Spider-Man. Um, so that's something, you know, that happens in that comic. Eventually, the Superior Spider-Man does get taken down. Um, and obviously, eventually, Flash gets uh, brought over. Because after this, he gets a better relationship with Iron Man a little bit and Captain America. So now it makes a little bit more sense why he might have been picked to go join the Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, not specifically that. I still don't understand why he was sent to be a Guardian of the Galaxy member, um, other than they wanted to get the Space Knight name in there. Um, but uh, but Tony does pick Flash to, to you know, uh, volunteer for that, or he, he volunteers Flash for that mission. And now you kind of see why. Okay, Tony gets a little bit more of a trust with uh, Flash here, but also a little bit more distrust of the symbiote. So, uh, so I kind of like that. So yeah, this book was a lot of fun. Um, it was really great to reread this because uh, it's been years since I've read the Superior Spider-Man run. And it's something I really like. Actually, I think to me it was the best part of Dan Slott's uh, whole run. And I know some people out there disagree and don't like the Dan Slott Spider-Man stuff, but there was a lot in it I did like. There was definitely things I was critical of. In fact, I gave Dan Slott a bunch of positive reviews um, on a lot of stories uh, leading up to Superior Spider-Man. And then I was critical of like one thing, I can't remember what it was, um, but it was like, I thought it was a, a pretty minor criticism. And then I went on to say that I enjoyed the rest of the book, but I that, guess that got me blocked by him on uh, YouTube, uh, on, on Twitter, um, on my old account. And I, I'm like, did he, I guess he was following me uh, for a minute, but I, I to, but to be blocked and unfollowed, I was just like, oh man. And then someone else told me, oh, it could have just been a bot. Like maybe you followed someone that he that he put on a blockchain or something. And then once I kind of saw he gets, he, you know, how how he is on social media, I was kind of like, ah, oh, kind of distance myself from him as a person, but still read his books from time to time. So I still like him as a writer. I, his Fantastic Four book right now is okay to me. Um, I did not like his Iron Man run, but I did like a lot of his Spider-Man run. But I did also was very critical of a lot of the run. But this standalone story here, I thought was pretty good. And I always like Christos Gage. And anytime him and Dan teamed up, I really enjoyed that because I know Christos you know, he's a really great writer, in my opinion. And uh, he was always nice to me whenever I got a chance to talk to him at Golden Apple Comics when I used to work there. And uh, he, like I said, and that maybe colors my opinion of him sometimes uh, because he was so nice to me, but also I'm able to separate people as writers and people. And uh, and so I know, like, I still genuinely stand by a lot of his writing. I do like his stuff uh, in a lot of cases. So, um, so yeah, so this was a really good Flash Thompson story has a little bit of the symbiote in there as a character, but it was also cool to see it bond with somebody else um, who it's been bonded to before, but not Doc Ock. Like it didn't have Doc Ock's brain, you know, Peter's body didn't have Doc Ock's brain. So it just added a little fun to it. And, uh, and to throw this in the middle of this big storyline was really great because a lot of times you could be like, hey, tell a Venom story in the middle of your Superior Spider-Man run. And he could, you know, it could have been phoned in on a lot of levels, but this actually was like, oh, this is nice. It helps advance the superior Spider-Man plot. Um, it gives uh, you know Sp uh, Spider-Man an excuse to use, even though nobody really buys it on the Avengers team, um, as to why he's been acting so funny lately. And uh, and then it also like enhances the the Flash Thompson relationship with the Avengers a little bit. So I thought all those elements worked uh, really well together, and that's why I end up liking this issue or this run. And it was only like four issues: 22, 23, 24, and twenty-five of Superior Spider-Man. So you can get the trade out there now. I think on Comicsology or in print, probably. It's called Superior Venom, and it's a fun time. And there's a couple things I left out of here, but for the most part, I think I covered all the Venom stuff at least. And so let me know what you think down below. Have you read this story before? Have you not? Uh, if you have, let me know your thoughts down below. And if you haven't, Hopefully you go check it out now and come up with uh, your opinion on it and then share it with me after you read it in the comments down below. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the show and supporting us now for 200 comic book episodes. And now next episode, episode 600, which you'll probably get in a few days. I still need more time to edit it. It's taking a lot. And my goal is to try to finish it on Tuesday because um, that's my next day off, I think, uh, is my next day off. And I will try to post that uh, for you guys on Wednesday. So, uh, and then that'll end this season of the show. And then we'll come back with season um, uh, five uh, in episode 601. We'll start probably start up again in February. That'll give me time to come up with a new intro for the show. We already have a new logo for the show. Um, so I'm starting to build all the elements I need. And then also you'll see this little table back here with all these toys on it. We might do some Venom ASMR stuff because uh, I have a Lego set. We could do some Venom ASMR Lego pieces. Um, I got the slime. We could do uh, some of that. 
I'm going to just dabble in it, see how well it comes out. It'll either be a bunch of smaller episodes or one long episode, um, but it'll just be something I do the one time. So I'm going to record it all together at once, but how I release it uh, will depend. Um, but this will be the only time we do it. I just wanted to dabble in that because I really enjoy falling asleep. The ASMR, I have a really bad time trying to sleep. I have for years, and it's not really just insomnia. It's, a, it's an absolute fear of closing my eyes uh, because... I don't picture things in my head. Uh, you know, I have no visual memory in a, in a, you know, and the ability to create visuals in my head um, is gone. And so when I close my eyes, it is just dark. It's just pitch black. And uh, I don't like the feeling. I don't like, like, like it at all. So I, I've been struggling with sleep for years because of that fear of closing my eyes and, and being afraid not of not waking up again. Um, so to me, ASMR is is calming the noises that you make uh, the tapping the, the the whispering things like that depending on who makes it so I don't know how deep into it I'll get I'm doing some more research right now and playing with some sounds but I'll try to get some of those episodes to you guys up in February if it's not one episode it'll be a couple smaller ones if it's not that it'll be one big one um, but we'll definitely make them venom vlog episodes just to have for fun just so we can do different things other than just talking about stuff and since the movie I don't know if we'll get movie news anytime soon other than it getting delayed because Morbius just got delayed. Hopefully Venom doesn't. Hopefully they stick to the uh, June release date. Um, so in case we don't get any movie news, i got to start coming up with a backup plan and make other content. So I'll try to get some of that other content out to you guys sooner um, in case we do get movie news um, you know, next month. So fingers crossed that we get something soon. So let me know what you think of Superior, uh, Spider-Man, Superior Venom, uh, the arc. If you want the whole story, whatever you want, Dan Slot's run, let me know your thoughts about that down below. And if you have any ASMR suggestions, I got Slime, I got Lego, I got uh, Coin Banks uh, of Venom, um, I got the mask with the tongue that moves. Uh, I got a book, uh, you know, and a comic book to flip through the pages. So there are, there's a lot of different things I want to play with that are all Venom related. So, uh, so I can't wait to make those videos for you guys. So thank you so much. I will see you guys in the future. Peace.